Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd, and in this video, we're moving into a new section of the CCIE Blueprint, which is the 1.3 section for EIGRP. Here, we're going to explore the 1.3a topic of EIGRP adjacencies. It's important to understand how we form neighbor adjacencies within EIGRP if we're going to delve into complex troubleshooting and configuration. So let's take a look at that now. An adjacency is a relationship formed with a neighboring EIGRP router. EIGRP can discover neighboring routers dynamically or through static configuration. Dynamic discovery is the default method initiated when EIGRP is enabled on an interface. With dynamic discovery, EIGRP sends the hello packets out to a multicast address in an attempt to discover neighboring EIGRP devices and form an adjacency. Static configuration requires that we manually designate a network address and then EIGRP would send hello packets out using a unicast neighbor address. An important note with static configuration is that once we specifically indicate a network, EIGRP multicast on the interface that is used to reach that network will be disabled. So that means if we have multiple routers on a network segment that we want to be EIGRP neighbors, we have to configure all of those routes statically or we need to make sure that we have dynamic discovery happening at the interface level. If we mix and match those configurations and those states, then we're not going to properly form adjacencies throughout the entire network. When it comes to the formation of an adjacency, all the neighbors have to agree upon the following set of parameters. The devices have to be in the same autonomous system number. If they're using authentication, they must have the same authentication configuration. Their interfaces must share a common subnet and their K values must match. The K values are of course placeholders for certain components that EIGRP uses for composite metric calculation. And you can see those K values listed in this chart. These are identified as K1 through K5, and we can change those values to influence the metric calculation. We'll discuss these K values more in depth a bit later in the blueprint when we dive into classic metrics and wide metrics. A couple of things that are missing from our must match parameters are the hello and hold timers. Those timers do not have to match in order for devices to become EIGRP neighbors. The hello interval is the rate at which EIGRP sends out hello messages. This can be changed on a per interface basis with the command IP hello hyphen interval EIGRP followed by the autonomous system number and the number of seconds that we want that interval to be set at. On slower interfaces, such as NBMA running on T1 or lower speeds, that default hello time is going to be 60 seconds. For all of our other interface types, such as the gig interface that I typically use, those are going to be five second defaults for the hello interval. The hold time is the amount of time that EIGRP will wait before declaring a neighbor adjacency to be unreachable. If no EIGRP packets are received by the device and that hold time expires, then there is a neighbor adjacency loss. By default, the hold time is set to three times the hello interval. So that would be 180 seconds on slower links and 15 seconds on most of our interface types. This can be changed on a per interface basis with the command we see here, IP hold hyphen time EIGRP followed by the autonomous system number and the number of seconds that we want to set that interval to. One thing to note is that although the default and the recommended ratio is three times the hello interval, changing the hello or hold interval individually does not affect the other timer. So that means if you change one of these timers, if you change either the hello or hold time, you probably want to change the other timer as well to make sure that you stay within the 3x ratio. When EIGRP routers become neighbor adjacencies, that starts, of course, with a hello packet. So let's say that we enable EIGRP on both of the routers seen here. Let's assume that R1 was the first router to send a hello packet. These are sent to the appropriate multicast address and they contain the essential configuration information that we mentioned earlier, such as the autonomous system number and the K values. Once R2 receives a hello message, it's going to prioritize sending back its own hello message so that R1 is aware of the neighbor. This puts both routers 
into what's called the pending state, meaning that they are waiting to form bidirectional connectivity before they exchange any routing information. R2 will then send a unicast update packet to R1, and that will contain no routing information. This is what we call a null update packet. This null update has a flag set instructing the neighbor to advertise its routes. That's called the init flag. R1 is required to acknowledge the receipt of this null update, and it sends back its own null update with its own flag set. There's also an acknowledgement sent, and this is an acknowledgement between the routers that we have a new neighbor adjacency formation taking place. Now, at this point, we are still in the pending state, and I want to point out that the only packets that can be exchanged during this state are the hello packets, the acknowledgement packets, and any packets with the init flag set to indicate an adjacency formation. After this, R2 responds with a final acknowledgement message acknowledging the null update that was sent from R1. And we're then moved into the upstate on both routers where we have an EIGRP adjacency successfully formed. The routers are then able to exchange complete routing information using update packets. After the synchronization is complete, anytime there's a change to the routing information, updates would be sent out in an incremental format rather than sending out a complete copy of the routing database. This update information is recorded to our EIGRP neighbor table, which we can of course see by running the command show IP EIGRP neighbors. Let's talk about the different types of packets that EIGRP uses as well. Before we do that, I'll mention that EIGRP packets are delivered using RTP, Reliable Transport Protocol. This is a Cisco developed protocol that's used to ensure packets are reliably delivered and that they're delivered in order. As for the packet types, we have the hello packets, which we've already discussed. We have the acknowledgement packets or ACK packets. And of course, these are sent as a response to several other types of packets in EIGRP. And we use those to acknowledge the receipt of information. These are essentially a hello message with an empty body. We have update packets, which we've also mentioned already, and these are used to share routing information. These are always delivered reliably and they require the receipt of an ACK message. We have query packets, which are used to determine the best route to a particular destination. Query packets are used to question EIGRP neighbors about feasible successor routes. On point-to-point -point interfaces or statically configured neighbors, these are sent as unicast messages. And with multi-access interface dynamic neighbors, they're sent as multicast. Just like updates, these also are delivered reliably and they require an acknowledgement. Although it's important to note that the acknowledgement itself doesn't contain any requested information. That information is actually found in the next type of packet, which is the reply packet. These are sent in response to query packets and they would provide feasible successor route information. These also require acknowledgement packets and they're always sent as unicast messages. They're sent back to the source of the query packet specifically. And then we have a couple of stuck in active state packets or SIA packets. We have SIA query and SIA reply packets. Both of these are unicast packets and they require acknowledgement. The SIA query packet is used to ask a neighbor if it is still working on the original query packet that was sent. If the neighbor is reachable, and if it is still working on that query, then it's going to respond with an SIA reply packet. That's going to reset our timers and ensure that the neighbor relationship doesn't get terminated prematurely before the query can be responded to. So let's jump into a simple lab and just quickly take a look at a couple of things in regard to EIGRP adjacencies. We have a very simple topology, just a couple of routers interconnected, and we're going to advertise our loopback networks, and we're going to configure an EIGRP neighbor adjacency between these devices. So on R1, let's say router EIGRP1, let's advertise our loopback network, and let's also add the network connecting us to R2, and we're done, very simple. Let's also, before we leave router one, let's turn on debugging for EIGRP. Let's say debug EIGRP packets. We'll turn that on on R1, and we'll jump over to R2 to complete our EIGRP configuration. So here, 
let's again say router EIGRP one. We'll advertise our loopback network. We'll add our 10.1.1.0 network as well. We should see a neighbor adjacency form and we do see that come up in our console, so that's good. Let's go back to R1 quickly. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off debugging so that it doesn't fill up our console. And let's scroll up to the top and let's just look at a couple of things. So up near the top of our debugging, you can see initially we were sending out these hello packets. And if you look at our timestamps, you can see that these were actually being sent out every five seconds we're sending a hello message. And those were happening before I configured router two. So this indicates again, our default hello interval of five seconds, which is exactly what I would expect to see here on my gig link. If we go farther down, you can see that we received a hello message from router two on the gig zero slash zero interface. We can see a message about our adjacency forming here. We can see our unicast update messages being sent and received. If we go on down, we see that we sent something called the TID list. That's the topology ID list. We see an update received. Notice that has the flag 0x1. This is the init flag. You can see that in parentheses as well. If we go further down, you can see that we were sending an ACK message here. We sent an acknowledgement. We received acknowledgements down here back from R2. One thing I passed up, if we go back, you'll notice this flag 0x8, E-O-T. That is the end of table flag. This indicates that the complete routing table has been sent to the neighbor. And of course, we'll see those hello messages just continue to be sent back and forth, as we see down here, acting as keep alive messages to make sure our EIGRP session stays alive. So lots of great information available to see here in debugging. We can see some of the back end things happening as our EIGRP adjacencies form. And of course, if we used a packet capture tool such as Wireshark, we would definitely have more visibility into this even deeper than we're seeing here with debugging. So that's a look at EIGRP adjacencies. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.